women doing such incredible things, entering politics, and it's about pulling them into the line and, and showing the world and our community at large that there is so much talent and how beauty plays a role in that talent. Hey everyone, welcome back to American Latino TV. I'm your host, Carolina Trejos. Up next, the brand Reina Rebelde was born out of Regina Merson's passion for makeup and extreme pride as her cultural identity as a Latina. Growing up in Mexico, Regina's makeup obsession started with the telenovela Rosa Salvaje and sitting at her mother's feet watching her beauty rituals. Her collection is equal parts wild, unpredictable, bold, impractical, feminine and luxurious, also sexy and severe in many ways, perfectly reflecting her identity as a Mexican woman embracing an American life. Check her out, it's Regina Merson. I'm Regina Merson, the founder and CEO of Reina Rebelde, cosmetics line targeting Latino women. And I'm so excited to be here today. I'm originally from Guadalajara. Jalisco, Mexico, and we are now based in Dallas, Texas. Growing up Latina, as I like to say, is the privilege of a lifetime. We moved to the United States when I was around 10 years old, and it was a few years of sort of trying to figure out my best and be cultural self, learning a new language, speaking Spanish at home, English at school, um, trying to understand what this great kind of American life was, but at the same time trying to stay very true to who I was as a Latina and my Mexican roots. So it was, you know, it was an ambicultural, sometimes very confusing time for me. Um, I certainly thought that it made my life more exciting and more dynamic, um, but it wasn't, you know, always easy, of course. There were a lot of challenges I had growing up living in an ambicultural kind of lifestyle that really prompted me to want to leave my career as a lawyer to go start Reina Rebelde. I always felt very proud of where I came from and other Latinas that I encountered, no matter what background they were from, not necessarily Mexican, but Colombian and Cuban and you know El Salvadorian and all these different wonderful dynamic kind of backgrounds that we have within our Latina culture, um, I always felt that there was this inherent pride and also a lot of frustration from the community about how we were talked down to, how we were marketed to, how we were basically treated, even though we are the largest consumer of cosmetics and many other products in this country. And I really, you know, as my career sort of progressed, I, I wanted to definitely take kind of the opportunity to give something back to the community and turn that frustration that I'd felt even as a little girl into something hopefully very positive. Younger women always seem to ask me how it is that I managed to start a, a makeup line kind of out of nowhere, and particularly Latina women who I think are trying to find a way also to incorporate so much of their heritage into what they're passionate about and how they devote their careers going forward. Um, and the advice that I always tell people is to pay close attention to that which you are drawn to because that is very informative in you know, where you're headed. And most of the times it has something to do with their community of origin or giving back to the culture that they, they came from and, and, from, and, uh, and of which they're very proud. Certainly the biggest pivot I took was when I decided to leave my career as a lawyer to go pursue this dream of starting a beauty line called Reina Rebelde. It was a pivotal moment because it was terrifying and obviously my family was supportive on the one hand and terrified on the other. Um, you know, I was an immigrant girl who, you know, grew up to live this incredibly successful American life as, a, as an attorney and it's a lot to turn your back on but it was something that I, I just knew that I had to do and I think I just sort of pushed through that fear and that feeling of challenge and, and sort of like who am I to, to go do something like this that's kind of bold and out there and at some point you sort of realize well who am I not to do that. You have to stop and really take stock of like what you are trying to do so for us it is this line that has this integrity about staying true to our mission of representing women in our community. There are, there's a lot of noise out there. There are a lot of other opportunities and shiny new things that, that come along the way that try to kind of get you off track or you're trading great distribution somewhere in exchange for diluting your message. And those have been tremendous pivotal points for me because I've had to sort of like recenter and refocus on 
the original reason why I started this brand. Um, and it, it was never to dilute the message. It's actually to amplify and strengthen the message as I go. So there have been a lot of pivots and, and challenges in the sense that I've had to say no to a lot more things than I expected to have to say no to along the way, sometimes at the sake of losing customers or losing money. We have so much talent within our community of women that are, you know, self-made makeup gurus, women that are starting, you know, comedian careers and doing stand-up, actresses, entrepreneurs, um, women doing such incredible things, entering politics, and it's about pulling them into the line and, and showing the world and our community at large that there is so much talent and how beauty plays a role in that talent. Um, it doesn't have to be your core, you know, makeup doesn't have to be your life, but all of us use makeup as a tool, so it is the future of Regna Verde is really about continuing to find those voices and using the brand as, as a vehicle to amplify what their story is.